You can hear me? Fine. Thank you. Um, nice to be here. You see, I renamed the title of this uh, talk today um, because I identified that Jan started with doing something in 30 minutes and I said, that's not possible. If I do something after him in 39 minutes, then I said, okay, I have to do it in 29 to be better than Jan. Then I identified, because of the microphone stuff, we have less time, so two minutes less to do it. Now it's too complex or not, a short demonstration of composable commerce in around about 27 minutes. <laughs> this is the first, uh, the second handover from Jan to me. Uh, this was uh, just a few hours before in the grab. Um, so, but I guess we are all well today. <laughs> so, target of this talk. Um, I want to verify if these, uh, all these composable things in e-commerce are really too complex, as many people say. Uh, but if not, what does it mean in the consequence? Uh, so, after this talk, would be fine if we all are a bit smarter, me especially. Uh, we should have seen a few working systems in uh, composable architecture. Uh, we should see satisfied and smiling people around here. And, um, of course, no open questions in the QA slot afterwards. If you have questions, use this QR code, um, as Jan also mentioned. Um, we will see. The agenda, uh, just a short introduction now, then uh, really theory in a very small nutshell, just to explain some words that we have, have, we, that we have the same basis. Um, then some statements are brought with, we want to check, and then a bit of technical demonstration in just a few minutes. And after that we see what does it mean, and then we will have no questions, that's it. So first introduction, um, Shopmacher, just really in a nutshell, we were founded 2005 as a Werbemacher, we did more than e-commerce, then we did e-commerce, now we are Shopmacher, that's it. Um, our focus is that we improve things. So 80% of what we do is improving um, architectures and uh, digital processes. Around about 20% is only setups. We have uh, around about um, 81 experts, 50 developers. Uh, four locations, uh, main location in the wonderful Gesher um, near the uh, Netherlands in Germany and uh, three locations here in uh, Vietnam. We have experience of composable commerce more than six years. Some of you will now say, hey, but this is a new word, composable, it's a new buzzword, why? We do the same stuff since years, now it's called different, that's it. So, that's me, Carsten, I'm head of development at Shopmacher and I brought some guests today, you will see what I mean. So uh, you will also see all the guys on the right side there. Um, let's, let's wait what will happen. Who am I? Um, I'm really, seriously, I'm 47 years old. I'm um, at Shopmach since 2016. Um, I have a wife and uh, three kids, uh, two daughters and a son. Personally, I really love to talk about sports, darts, soccer, music, whatever, if you want to have a small talk with me, you can grab me and talk about that stuff. Uh, professionally, I really love to talk about uh, HR and IT, uh, how to, to deal with uh, IT skills and so on. This is a, it's a very important topic for me. And I love to talk in communication um, in general. So, and now, first important thing, theory in a very small nutshell. Let's start with, what is a monolithic system? And I have images in mind, and these images look like this. On the left side, you see something like an uh, uh, egg-laying wool and milk-producing pig. And on the right side, it's the definition of a monolith. It's a stone. It's a stone based on one material, and I see some, some Faces, uh, what, what is it? it? It exists, really. It's uh, in the northern of Germany. It's in Dangast. Uh, if you have the chance to go to there, you can have a look. This is a monolith. 
to define what is a monolithic system, we said, okay, we have to ask so many people and uh, let's see what they say. We are quite lazy and we said, uh, let's uh, do it in another way. Because of that, we said, okay, let's use ChatGPT for it. Uh, who already uses ChatGPT? It's really terrifying, I guess. ChatGPT, what is a monolithic system? And after a few seconds, you have these paragraphs and everything makes sense. But um, the most important words are here. All components are combined in a single large executable program. And it's a large piece of software that is deployed and run. So it's, it's one software, that's it. Then there is another buzzword that's best of breed. Also here, I have images in mind. Images is on the left side. This is my best of breed image. A very strong brain, strong body. You can do anything. You're fast. There is a really good performance. And on the right side, it's, uh, it fits together. It's modular. You can use components. Um, so quite interesting. Also here, ChatGPT, what is best of breed? And it says, selecting and using the best individual products or services. So different services and different software. Best tools or solutions for specific tasks or needs. And now what the hell is composable commerce? Also here, let's ask uh, ChatGPT. ChatGPT says, to mix and match different components or building blocks to meet the specific needs. Okay, now, what is the difference to best of breed? My image is the same, and uh, let's see what uh, ChatGPT says. Um, best of breed involves selecting and using individual products, blah, blah, blah. Most important thing is uh, the last stuff involves combining and configuring individual components to create a customized solution. So, from my point of view, it means these uh, building blocks really stick easily together. It's not um, really complex and it's easy to combine them. That's maybe the magic uh, why this buzzword composable commerce exists. And there is a reason why I'm here. It's um, because in the last uh, month, we had uh, some uh, statements were identified where people talked about composable commerce, and um, they said, well, it's, it's so complex, it's so complex, but they never did it. And um, I brought some, some examples with. First one is, um, for MVP, with a system like commerce tools, you need a team of five, six devs and 18 months to go. This is fact. This was a salesman from a different vendor. And he said it in an appointment with a customer from us. And uh, his problem was that um, I and our CTO, we were both part of the support. We said, what do you tell you? That's not true. And uh, so he was, um, it, it, it was not such a nice meeting after that. But it's not the only statement. Um, this is an, um, a podcast from Germany, it's uh, um, called Shotcar FM. It comes from the shopware context. And uh, they had an episode uh, called Composable Commerce. And um, they had really good questions in it. For whom is it and uh, who can do it and so on, everything. Really good questions. But they gave answers. Like, what does it mean in terms of effort? 10, 20 devs working for three years and they have to be good. Or it has much higher effort again in comparison. So in comparison to what? And um, then I, I said, let's verify. If it's really too complex, uh, maybe I have a, a wrong perspective or whatever. And so let's see what will happen. This is the reason why um, I wanted to do this talk today. This is why I said, okay, let's do something like a technical demonstration. And yeah, it feels like this, a bit like Tech Striker on the right side, or to be um, to walk through traffic in Ho Chi Minh City. Really nervous because we saw if something doesn't work, then it's maybe boring for you, but uh, for, for you, not for me. 
So this is my, my target now. In around about 30 minutes, I will have ordered this fantastic Shopmacher shirt by using a composable e-commerce architecture. And this is the architecture uh, I want to use for it. Is, it. is it readable for you? Yeah, okay. So, um, which tools uh, do we want to set up? We have um, at the bottom the front end, it's a single page application, it's uh, based on uh, commerce tools front end. The back end logic is done by, uh, by commerce tools. We have uh, Algolia as a um, uh, search um, vendor. We have uh, on the top Akineo, which is the, a product uh, information management system. And with NECOM and Cloud ERP system, we use here for order management. You will see later. And then we have um, a bit of uh, connecting tools like Lucy Mesh. You will see what this is later. And uh, some AWS stuff. Optionally, like Algolia, we also have a Hetl CMS on the left side. It's HiGraph. And I want now combine these tools so that we then have the chance to buy the Shopmach shirt. Okay, let's start. The approach, we start with the product data in the PIM, in Akineo, and walk then through the life cycle of this product until it is as an order, part of an order in Nikom. Some premise, some pre-work is already done, like initializing of the systems. It would be very boring for you if I would do it now here. Uh, and besides, I use, of course, some existing code lines, uh, connectors, uh, like plugins, you know, from other tools like Shopware or modules, wherever. That's it. So let's start. Um, step one, products. Uh, the topic is we need around about 50 articles of Shopmacher merch stuff. And it's, it's a task for my first guest. It's uh, Sabine. She's account lead um, and consultant at Shopmacher. And uh, she wants to tell us something. Master from the Shopmaha merch shop. And I want to tell you some news. What we did so far, we made a workshop to create the product data structure we need uh, later on. And then we configured the basic settlement in uh, Akineo itself. After that, we imported our basic product data from Exit. <coughs> into Akineo and there we enrich the product data as you can see here. But now you need the product data, so let's hurry and have a look. I created the commerce tools, data settings, and I will send you the API keys for you via Slack. So enjoy the next steps. Gepacken gas, over and out. So, first status, we now have a PIM. Akineo, completely cloud, um, is configured. We have product data where we now can work with. Then we need the commerce backend. And here we have um, two tasks. First one is we need a project, m maybe two for staging and the production system. This is a task for uh, Natasha Karstedt, a consultant at Shopmacher. Maybe one of you know her. And um, then we have also um, the topic that we need to sync the data from Akineo to commerce tools. This is a task for two um, backend developer at Shopmacher since around about six years. And also here, we will have a short uh, status. Hi, Carsten, and hi to you lovely guys in the audience. To be honest, I'm a little surprised on how many people are listening there to you. But all jokes beside, um, let's uh, quickly talk about uh, what I prepared for you within the Commerce Tools Merchant Center so that we don't need to waste the time from the people listening to you. Uh, within the Commerce Tools Merchant Center, I created two projects within the Shopmacher organization, one production and one staging system um, with the lovely name Composable Commerce in 43 minutes. You can for sure rename it uh, afterwards if you want. Um, I just set up all the uh, standard settings right at the beginning and generated uh, two API keys for you. 
uh, with administration rights, just to simplify everything for you. So uh, you will find the credentials within one password, but don't break anything, please. Um, how much time did it take? I would say something around 10 minutes. Well, to be honest, it took me around five minutes in the queue in front of the coffee machine, but psst, don't tell anyone. Um, okay, so uh, have fun with uh, finishing your presentation and uh, enjoy listening. Bye. So completely done without singing karaoke. That's really interesting. So uh, first, hands-on step, part one. Now we have Arcaneo, we have commerce tools. Now we need some, um, some basic configuration. What we now have is a commerce tools project with this completely plain, there is nothing in it. And um, this is what we do with the first step hands-on now. Um, for this task, we use uh, Terraform. Uh, who of you knows Terraform and already use it? Is? Okay, um, I, I, I guess you like it. <laughs> Terraform is an uh, infrastructure as code software, and you're able to roll out complex architectures or configuration settings or whatever uh, stateful in different systems. And um, I use it now to roll out some basic configurations into the system and to create a Google Cloud Platform pubs up, uh, which um, subscribes to commerce tools and will later get the order and send it uh, to my Lucy Mesh system. That's it in general. And uh, so let's see if this works. And I'll say Terraform start. Terraform checks now the state and checks what, uh, what happens there. Okay, I have to confirm it. And so it's done. And I would say, if I go into the settings now in Commerce Tools, you will see the title is changed. It's called now Composable Commerce in 29 minutes. It's the old name, okay, but uh, nevertheless. And uh, then we have here the languages, currencies, uh, what we need to then fulfill later the order. That's it in general for the first step. What we also have is uh, here now Google Pubs Hub. So we have now automatically created uh, the Pubs Hub. Now, next status. Hi, Carson. Today I want to show you how I config the Arcanio connector. So the first one, we need the Amazon Web Service, the Commerzone API credential, Arcanio API credential. I already related all of them now, show you. The first one is the Amazon user here. And the next one, the Commerzone API, you can find here. And the next one, the Arcanio, you can find the connect, connection setting, and common tone. The next step you need to do is create a new config file, put on the mapping for the attribute. Put the new file here. And you can run in your local machine with the serverless, like this command. Or you can put it in a repository with the GitLab. It takes me around 30 to 45 minutes to setting all of them. And that's it. Have fun. So thank you, too, for this part. And what we now need is, of course, use this Arcaneo, the moment it just exists. And um, as I'm quite a lazy guy, because of that, I don't use uh, serverless on my local machine, but uh, I would do it directly um, in the AWS as a Lambda function, trigger it, and hopefully, if everything worked, then we should have now a few products and commerce tools. Uh, 15 uh, articles. So now everything which is um, uh, done in Arcaneo is now synced to, um, to commerce tools 
and uh, can be used, uh, extended, improved, refined, whatever, then later. So status, PIM ready, products added in Akineo, commerce tools project set up and configured, products added. So next check here. Then we have uh, the search, step three. Um, I won't integrate it as a search, but I, I will show you that we also have the data then in uh, Algolia. Um, also for this, we have uh, a special guy which um, will tell us something from Spain here. So let's hear what Leonard says. Hi Carsten, you asked me to help you with Algoia connection for your demonstration project. I created two index, production and staging. Just pick the API keys from the settings. And please configure the Algoia connector. For example, if you need the min and max price or if you have different variant types for your products. Afterwards, just deploy it in our GitLab repository with the serverless. That's it already. I think I needed around 30 minutes, 45 minutes to fork the repository and create the application. That's it. Have fun. Okay, so next status. We have um, Algolia as uh, our search vendor there. And of course, we need to fill in the data uh, in it. Uh, does someone know Algolia? Okay, just a few. For uh, all the other people, Algolia is uh, really a very powerful and um, quite mighty uh, search where you can um, do quite good stuff in regarding recommendation, personalization, and so on. And it's very, very fast, really cool. Just uh, check it, try it if you had the chance. Uh, I, I did it before, I did it this night when I came back from the rock night and um, uh, was out of the grab. Uh, so we have now here um, the index. So the data now automatically is synced to Algolia and um, is done when an article is updated and Commerce Tools is added, it's automatically synced to Algolia again. So next status, checkpoint um, search and uh, now it's um, getting interesting because, um, of course, you can order something in e-commerce without having a front end, but most of us don't like it, I guess, and because of that, I also integrated a front end. For this, we used uh, Commerce Tools front end. Um, we could have chosen also different systems like View Storefront, Uniform, Makaira, what, whatever. So uh, I used um, Commerce Tools front end because it was part of uh, the statements we saw there. And uh, so let's see what uh, is the magic behind uh, this single page application front end. Hello, everybody. Hey, Carsten. I hope you're all having a great time so far and enjoy the talk. My name is Xiaomi. I'm solution engineer with Commerce Tools. Carsten reached out to me earlier and uh, telling me about the idea, and he actually said, Xiaomi, I have a challenge for you. I have this idea of the talk, and I need a front end to get started really quickly. Can you help me there? Can you set something up for me? And I said, like, of course, Carsten, challenge accepted. And here we are. An hour later, I made sure that your environment gets set up. Uh, I share the credentials with you, and you can already log in and start creating your page. So thanks for uh, reaching out to me, and good luck with the rest of your talk, and enjoy. So thank you very much, Xiaomi. And um, of course, he created an instance, a Commerce Tools front-end instance, where you can build your front-end. Um, it's based on, on, on demo styling. And of course, we also need here uh, a connection between um, the front-end and Commerce Tools, because there are different systems. What we do here, or I have to do here, is just to change some things here in a YAML file. That's it. Uh, some access tokens are in it, and um, then they are pushed into uh, the GitHub repository, and automatically then the front end connects to commerce tools and uh, fetches then uh, all the services from them. That's the magic behind it, so nothing I have to do in general. 
So next status, commerce tools front end ready to use. And uh, we will later see uh, how it looks like. So then the last point before we then can go into uh, the order workflow is um, my uh, order management system. Um, therefore, I asked um, Stefan K. from uh, NECOM uh, from Austria to prepare something. And uh, also here, just uh, for a second, he will tell us what he did. Hello, Carsten, and hello to the audience from Austria. My name is Stefan. I'm the CTO of NACOM, and I want to give you a short overview of what we did to enable Carsten to do this presentation, what you are watching today. So first of all, in our order management, we had to create a demo uh, client for Carsten. So he is able to send us his orders, and we are able to fulfill them. Uh, after creating this demo client, uh, we were sharing the credentials to Carsten for the microservices and did some tests with him. Uh, so we, we, we saw that the uh, orders are working and coming into our system. And voila, after uh, some tests, we are here now and we see that Carsten Dutschke has sent some orders to our system. So. Thank you and have a nice presentation with Carsten. Hello, Carsten, and hello to the audience from Austria. My name is from Austria. Hello. Um, important to know, of course, these were postman requests to send uh, to NACOM and to check if the order workflow is generally uh, working. So we now have uh, also this part, but of course, we need now the um, data coming into NACOM. And you remember, uh, in the beginning, I um, built up also um, a GCP uh, PubSub and um, added some push endpoint. And this is now the last step, so that we are then um, in a working, uh, composable e-commerce architecture. And this is um, what we call Lucy Mesh. It's a tool. Um, the idea is the same as the bubble thing Jan mentioned. Uh, we did it by ourselves because um, we have special um, challenges and requirements and we want to have a lean tool. And so we based a, a small tool um, with which we can connect different systems and create workflows to um, exchange data. Hi, Carsten. Uh, you asked me to prepare the order export processes via our Lucy software, which is kind of an interesting task for a non-developer like me. But yeah, let's check the result there. So first of all, I created the formats that are needed from the documentations, even from the shopping system as well as from NECOM. Uh, you can find them here. Um, next thing is that I created the workflow for that, which is part of the current version that you will find here. Uh, created a post trigger. I already sent it to you the production URL for that to trigger that. Um, maybe interesting is the mapping of the values that I did here. So, um, and at the end, of course, the order export as well, which is post method as well. So, um, I already sent it to you even the tokens that I needed and tested that thing with Stefan from NECOM. And let's say it worked somehow. So, good luck. Bye. Okay. So first uh, thing, famous last words, it works somehow and good luck. We will see, this was uh, Phil, he's a uh, non-developer, as he said, Phil is um, also account lead at Shopmacher, and uh, so he was able to do that. Current status, we heard it, should work. So uh, all imports and exports are done, uh, systems are initialized and configured, uh, front end is uh, hopefully usable. So let's try to buy some Shopmacher merch stuff. And uh, uh, pop, pop. somewhere here has to be now the front end. I refresh it because now we should have uh, products. Yeah, okay, fine. Here are my products. This is um, what I want to buy. It's also an old one. Uh, we are working currently on a new collection with uh, 29 and 27 as a uh, motive, by the way. So add two back. 
And now, let's see, check out. We have, of course, uh, not a payment service provider uh, included and integrated. We use just uh, pay in advance at this moment. Next step would then something like uh, integrating uh, Adyen, pay one, whatever. So now I need both hands, I guess. And now let's see if it works. Thanks for ordering. This is fine. So now the order is um, placed in Commerce Tools. Um, front end connection to Commerce Tools was successful. Order is placed, everything else behind it was successful. But what I want to have is now that automatically the order is sent over Lucy Mesh to the cloud ERP. So let's see if uh, we have some order here. <laughs> so, and there it is. You can see here. Um, <coughs> we have now also synchronized the data to uh, Nikom and um, everything was successful, the complete product lifecycle from the beginning in Akineo in the PIM system where we have a powerful system to work with products uh, until a cloud ERP system to use the order management to have the power to use also uh, there are some rules and so on was um, so far successful. That's, uh, I would say, a Good, a good status, and uh, I'm quite happy, honestly. This is gone. I guess now we could uh, relax a bit. Could um, <laughs> later. <laughs> I'm, I'm not finished. <laughs> I have some gifts more. Wait. <laughs> so what is the conclusion now? That's um, the point. In general, it was successful so far. But important is to know how complex is composable commerce. The summary is we needed around about one and a half hours for system initializing, configuring of six systems. You heard all these minutes summed up. But now we have an always roll out ready architecture. Prepare timings around about two, maybe two and a half weeks for creating um, the Akineo connector, for um, building some stuff up, which uh, the, the code lines are used here today. Roller time, less than 29 minutes, uh, connecting and syncing the data and uh, testing the, in Germany we say Durchstich. Um, so uh, this was the time we needed here. Tools, frameworks, and languages we used. TypeScript, JavaScript, Terraform, AWS, GCP, and our low-code UI. Uh, I use AWS and GCP because I wanted to show that it doesn't matter what you use. You can use what you want, where you feel comfortable with. Uh, everything is possible here. And uh, needed Jobmacher HR. Um, we needed uh, some consultants, as you, as you saw. Uh, product owners, and uh, one dev. That's it. So, from my point of view, it's not complicated. One might say, ooh, that's a big statement. Uh, yeah, I played really well, but what does it mean? And um, the question is, do we now all have to switch to composable architectures? And definitely not, because um, Things happen sometimes, and there are reasons why they happen. And not anybody has uh, to do it because there are details um, uh, important. And these details are relevant to take a decision 
what you want to do, if you want to have composable stuff or something else. Just a few important parameters to care about if you have to decide this. First one is the total cost of ownership, which means care about update and maintenance costs, the real maintenance costs, and not the one the people out of the team say because they have fun with deployments or something like that. Just really real costs regarding updates and maintenance. Uh, license fees, of course, very important. You saw a few systems. You have a few licenses there, not only one. And, of course, costs for shop management. You have the management to be done in more than one system. Mindset, skill set in the company, very important from my point of view. The most important thing, um, does a mindset for a best of breed approach exist? How many people are involved there? Is it only one guy? Then uh, don't give him six systems to work on it, for example. That doesn't make sense to anyone. And uh, I forgot, it's a skill set given. Uh, people have to, they, they need fun to work with it in this uh, architecture. And then, of course, the real requirements. What does your customer really need, or you as a company? Which processes bring which requirements? And really care about in detail and don't care about uh, which features do I have if I use this uh, system? That's the wrong approach there. So from my point of view, if possible, give Composable Commerce a trial. If not, fine. But please do not tell that it is too complex in general, but I guess that's just not true. If you have questions, use this QR code, and uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you for listening, and hopefully you had a bit, bit of fun here. <laughs> okay, any questions? Yes, I have a question regarding the upgrades in the furniture. Do you, do you have a proposal of sectors? Any yeah. uh, they not this? How to uh, monitor them and stop them down? And the other thing is also. Uh, good, really good questions, because um, if you are really in a productive environment, then later these things are relevant if you are successful or not. Um, monitoring, you have tools like, for example, a data doc or whatever, where you have uh, a centralized, uh, mighty and powerful tool where you combine any information of all the systems to be aware of it, for example. So if one, in, in best case, from my point of view, you need one central point of information, where you have it and where you also uh, configure the trendings and uh, the monitoring, whatever you need, of course. Um, life cycle is also very important. Um, I used here commerce tools. Um, I personally like their API, for example, because you know that it's very stable and there are almost no breaking changes in it. So um, this is, but in general, a very important thing. Um, take care of it if uh, you choose a system that uh, it is in perspective in the future stable and um, that also breaking changes um, can be avoided. Okay, anything else? Oh, I, I didn't get it. I understood what is the difference. Okay. Why would you choose uh, to make your own system instead of, instead of uh, going on a ready-made solution, solution with Shopify or WooCommerce? Yeah. Um, it's the reason the best of breed approach makes sense if you have the requirements for it. For it. If you have a, a small shop, then uh, of course it doesn't make sense, but you can compare this architecture, this system architecture with, uh, for example, WooCommerce. Um, 
you choose such architectures, not for uh, a demo project with uh, 15 articles where you can buy a shirt. It's an architecture you would choose if you want to expand, if you know that you grow, if you have um, special requirements regarding, for example, the product's data. Uh, for example, we needed, uh, we choose Akineo because you have in Akineo things like um, uh, product rules and, uh, and, and, and quality measuring of products. And this is the reason why we said it makes sense to do it in a different system where the responsibility and the focus is to care about the products. Because products management, information management, is in Akineo a few times better than in an e-commerce system. And um, an e-commerce system has the focus, from my point of view, to care about the commerce logic. And this is what we did here. That's what I, what I meant in the end. Of course, you could choose a different approach. And um, of course, it may be that Shopify is the solution, or maybe also WooCommerce, because you have a uh, a functional working working block and you just want to extend it and start with um, e-commerce. But if you choose to grow into an enterprise e-commerce system, then this is an approach which would definitely make sense. Okay, so then, thank you very much. And, ah, okay. Uh, it's uh, also a good uh, question. Um, there exists um, tools and accelerators like, for example, uh, the Mach Composer. Um, the Mac Composer uh, for microservices, uh, cloud only API driven and uh, headless is um, something which is, for example, built by an agency in the Netherlands. It's from Lab Digital. And th they build it exactly based on Terraform, a complete composer where you then have all the dependencies um, and you really orchestrate everything from there. So, um, yeah, this is uh, a very good point. Okay, something else? Then have a nice lunch. Thank you for listening. <laughs>